let's illustrate the correspondence theorem um, by trying to learn about the group S4. So um, we know that S4 can be written as, um, right, the, we can write S4 as the set of, you know, um, you know, it's permutations. of, you know, the set containing four elements. And, you know, we can ask ourselves, what might be, um, what, what are, what are, the, what are the possible orders of subgroups, for example? So, we know that the order of S4 um, will be, Let's see, I think it's four factorial, right? Because we can choose four places for the first one, then three for the second one, then two places for the third one, and one place for the last one. So that's four factorial, which is 24. Um, so by, uh, by the counting formula, There might be subgroups of orders one, well, there is a sub order one, two, three, four, let's see, all those divide 24, six, eight, 12. And I think I'm not missing anything, right? 24 is. Two cubed times three. Um, so these are the possible orders of groups. Um, so consider the following uh, clever construction. So consider the ways of so the ways of partitioning the set one, two, three, four into uh, sets of size two. So there are there are three possibilities. One is the set one, two, um, and then the set three, four. One of them is the set, well, let's see, one, three, um, and two, four. And the last one is the set one, four. And two, three. Okay. So, and then the thing we'll notice, notice, um, S4 will permute uh, these partitions. So why don't we give them names so we can call this capital Pi 1, we can call this capital Pi 2, and we can call this capital Pi 3, um, I capital Pi, just writing like this. Um, and so, for example, the partition, or not the partition, but the cycle one, two, three, four, will take one to two and two to three. Um, three will go to four and four will go to one. So for example, pi one, so one will go to two, so we'll go to 
one will go to two, two will go to three, three will go to four, and four will go to one, which is precisely pi three. And you know, we can we can do this for the other ones, right? Like um, pi two will be fixed. We can see that by seeing that, you know, one will go to two, three will go to four. So this set will be two four. So the, the two sets sort of swapped places, but this um, we're not sort of keeping we're not really keeping track of the order of the sets. So the two sweats swapping places actually fixes this. And then and then our um, well pi three is going to go to pi one. And you can you can see this by by doing this out. And so what's interesting is here now we have a set of three different elements um, that's acted on by S4, but the permutations of these elements are, so, but each element of S4 gives us a permutation of these partitions, um, which is exactly an element of S3. So what we have is a morphism, S4, to S3, and I'll leave it to you to verify that this is a morphism. And so let's understand what the correspondence theorem says about this morphism. So this is going to be surjective. Um, you can you can see this by fiddling around with um, elements of S4 until you find one that um, you know does every single partition. So right here we have uh, interchanging one and three, and so all you have to do is find one that uh, cyclically permutes these, and then you'll have all of S3 um, by multiplying those two together. Um, and then the, the next thing, so so this will be a surjective map. So the correspondence theorem applies. Um, and then what is the kernel going to be? Well, the kernel is going to be things that um, preserve all of these uh, partitions here. So uh, in particular, um, if we're going to have, uh, let's see, well, if we're going to have the, the ones that are going to do that will be um, elements of S4, which are a product of two just disjoint two cycles. So let's let's think about this calculation. So kernel of B uh, is going to be equal to um, the set of um, products of disjoint two cycles. Um, so let's see. One, two, three, four, one, four, three, two, and one, three, two, four. So why why are these in the kernel? Well, each of these will obviously preserve one of the one of the partitions because it will just swap the two things that are in the same set. And because these are sets, we don't care about the order. Um, but if you look at it, each of these elements will also preserve the um, the other two permutations because what they will end up doing is swapping the two elements that are between each set, right? So, right, it'll swap, right? So if I have one, two, three, four. Okay, one, two, three, four will swap one and two, and it will swap three and four. And so what I'll be left with is two, four on this side and one, three on this side. Um, 
So for the other two permutations um, that aren't obviously preserved, you'll see that it's that actually is preserved because it will swap the two sets that um, that we have here. Uh, and why are these the only things in the kernel? Well, if you look at anything, well, obviously the identity uh, is in the kernel, so I should probably write that down. So first I'll say E, the identity. Um, and so why isn't anything else in the kernel? Well, if you have something that's just a two cycle, one of these permutations, it will swap one of the two numbers, but not the other, uh, and that won't preserve it. Uh, if you have something that is a three cycle, it will leave one of these numbers unchanged, um, which won't preserve these partitions. And if you have something that's a four cycle, um, you'll be able to see that it's also not going to preserve it sort of by doing a similar thing to what we did here with, with this four cycle. Um, and, and those are all the possible cycle structures in S4. Um, you can have all one cycles, you can have two two cycles, you can have one three cycle, you can have one two cycle, and you can have one four cycle. Um, and that's all of them. So this is our kernel. So the correspondence theorem, theorem says that the subgroups of S3 correspond bijectively to the subgroups of S4 that contain K. And so, and, and moreover, a subgroup is a normal subgroup, right? Normal, if and only if the subgroup is normal on the other side. And the order of a subgroup on this side, right, the order of a subgroup on this side is equal to the order of its image times the order of k. So in particular, um, now we can learn things about subgroups of S4. So for example, um, we conclude, say as a corollary, that there exists a subgroup of order 12 in S4. So the subgroup of order 12, so we have a subgroup of order 3 um, of S3, um, and this is a normal subgroup. Um, it's the subgroup generated by one rotation. Uh, it's got order three, it's a three cycle in S3. So there's a subgroup of order 12 in S4. Um, so take the subgroup generated by rotation, say call that rotation X, um, and then uh, the order of X times the order of K will be 12. Uh, and then and, and this will be normal because the subgroup is normal in S3. Um, and in addition, there, there exists three subgroups of order eight. So these will come from Y, where Y is a reflection and then x, y, and then x squared, y. And, you know, each has order 2. So um, 2 times 4, 
will be 8. Of order 8. And these will not be normal. Because these three subgroups are not normal. 